all right y'all welcome back to another video on the channel and in this video man i'm gonna be talking about one of my favorite games of all time dragon ball z raging blast 2 now raging blast 2 is probably like my first uh video game experience outside of like smackdown vs raw 2008 because i used to play that all the time You're not going to win a match by insulting your opponent. But yeah, Raging Blast 2 was also like my first Dragon Ball Z game experience. So I guess that's kind of why it's it's like up there when it comes to video games. But nah, man, this shit, this shit stands the test of time. Like, this shit is amazing. Like, Raging Blast 2 was always a game that I played with my brother where things would get very fucking heated because somebody would use a Chaozu and somebody would die to Chaozu. And dying to Chaozu is disrespect of the highest degree. So, you know what happened after that. Tripping, bro. You tripping. <laughs> also, man, let me tell you now. Rolling that analog stick as fast as you can to combat beam struggles and sh like that, man. That is the quickest way to get free carpet burn. And as a child, I used to take the rubber off the joysticks because I, I felt like I had better grip. Yeah. Looking back at it, I might have always been crazy. But aside from that, Raging Blast 2 is a fighting game developed by Spike and published by Bandai Namco Games. And it was released in 2010 for the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360. And yeah, it was a sequel to Dragon Ball Raging Blast. And although it's missing the what if scenarios and story mode from the first game, this game makes you a genuine monster through its game modes. And yeah, um, I'm going to just say it now. Uh, there probably will be a game on Raging Blast. Uh, that's probably going to be a lot longer. But, uh, yeah. If this does good, then, yeah, I'll, I'll probably do one on Raging Blast. But, yeah, let's start talking about Raging Blast 2. Okay, so one thing that I have to speak about before I even get into Raging Blast 2 is the um kenji yamamoto scandal um and and i and i have done research on this so the scandal started out first with just allegations where uh people discovered that several tracks composed by yamamoto for raging blast 2 had a striking resemblance to music from other sources and this was from video games and just flat out non-video games and the similarities were so accurate that it led to allegations of plagiarism. And uh, just for an example, I'll just name off some stuff that uh, Yamamoto would just end up uh, plagiarizing from. That's what it is. Uh, Nickelback, um, The Legend of Zelda, and it's just a, a whole bunch of stuff. He was just, and I'm not even gonna lie, it sounds better than it. I don't even, I don't, I wouldn't even consider it plagiarism at that point. If he makes it sound better, then it is what it is but yeah um people found out that he was pretty much like doing this and what this led to was subsequent versions of raging blast 2 like a month later they would end up having a completely different soundtrack from the original which just flat out erased his work completely now i'm usually not one of those people who say that the like i'm not an original elitist but in this case the original is literally just better. I don't care if it's plagiarized. Leave it in the game. Like, I listen. Although it's unethical or whatnot, it's just better. Honestly, if you can play this game with the plagiarized music, please play with the plagiarized music. It is the true Dragon Ball Raising Blessing. All right, but that's enough with talking about the Yamamoto scandal. Now it is time to talk about the game modes of Dragon Ball Raising Blast 2. <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna try to kind of bring back that energy I had in the in the midsection. I don't really know what happened, honestly. I was I, I woke up, and yeah, this this video is like literally stretched over the span of a few days. I have a shitty work ethic. I wouldn't even say it's a work ethic. I just get in these modes where like I just I can't I can't operate and I just sit around. But but yeah, all right. Now it's time to talk about the game modes. All right, so now we're gonna talk about the game modes. Um, you got Galaxy Mode, Battle Zone. And the world tournament and the cell games. Galaxy mode and battle zone are the main ways you like get characters to your roster. 
and galaxy mode isn't your typical story mode in fact it's not a story mode at all it's just picking a character and fighting with them until the game says you're done uh it's it's not really that you know that that simple and that you know unenthusiastic but um essentially in galaxy mode what you do is you just pick let's just say i pick videl i pick videl and then i fight through a bunch of her characters or a bunch of her battles and it varies in difficulties and stuff like that and you get to a point where it's just like a little fiery box and that fiery box is where you can you know you'll end it and you'll unlock a new character so when you beat videl's uh, uh galaxy mode you get adolescent gohan and that's how you it kind of encourages you to play with every single character and it's a it's a neat way to do it for me i mean some people might just get sick of it and be like man fuck that shit i don't want to fucking play no goddamn cyberman to get bardock that's bullshit but yeah that that's how you would get it and um battle zone battle zone is literally just um picking a character and going through a bunch of uh battle zones essentially like you start off with vegeta and then it just progressively gets more difficult and more difficult and more difficult and yeah it's how you unlock like enhanced characters and those characters are like beyond broken they're a little they're a little busted if i must say so myself but yeah um battle zone is pretty much that simple it's literally just a masochist wet dream uh it's just go through a bunch of you know zones it's it's very difficult it starts to get very fucking difficult like it's ridiculous how you know how difficult it gets but um I'm going to go ahead and go back to Galaxy Mode for a second. Uh, how I was mentioning that you can, you know, beat certain characters, uh, Galaxy Mode, to get more characters. Sometimes, uh, if you want to, like, really progress through, like, the character mode and 100% it, you have to beat somebody else's Galaxy Mode up to a certain point so it can unlock it for that character. So, let's just say I'm playing as Vegeta and I want to unlock something for Trunks. If I play through Vegeta's uh, Galaxy Mode enough, it'll unlock something for Trunks' Galaxy Mode, and it'll like it'll probably be like locked off. Like even if you beat everything else in that person's Galaxy Mode, and you try to play it, it'll just be blacked out. And it's usually like Ultimate difficulty, which is like the hardest difficulty in the game. Also, they have ridiculous challenges. Like uh, there is one for Vegeta where you have to fight all of the androids. At near death and essentially near death just means that you're one shot like you die from a key blast and you have to fight all three of the androids at near death now uh i don't know about you but that seems a little uh you know crazy and some people genuinely hold grudges against the people who design those near death you know scenarios but it's really not that difficult just get up in the air charge up and spam the ultimate like you do that i mean i mean you know that sounds boring but there is a way to get like auto health recovery but what you have to do for that is you have to beat frieza and then you have to beat cooler and then you have to beat go tanks and mega and metal coolers uh galaxy mode and it's just listen i'm not gonna be that type of guy to go through a bunch of hoops and fucking ringers to get what I, i'm just gonna fucking i'm gonna jam my face into it and i'm just gonna over and over and over again i'm gonna keep banging my head up against that wall as long as i need to just to win see i, I think i have an ego problem but i don't give a fuck man i refuse to let the game be better than me fuck you elden ring also there is a feature in this game called raging soul and i'm just gonna let uh chat gpt explain that because i don't really know how to explain it to you beyond my fifth grade vocabulary and yeah, ChatGPT's definition of Raging Soul is Raging Soul is a special mode that characters can enter during battles. When a character activates Raging Soul, their basic attacks become significantly more powerful, but they lose the ability to use their special moves or super attacks. This emphasizes a, an aggressive, close quarters combat, uh, encouraging players to overwhelm their opponents with relentless melee attacks. In the Raging Soul mode, uh, the Raging Soul mode can be a game changer, providing a temporary boost and offensive capabilities that can turn the tide of a fight see sounds fine sounds like a really good thing but wait until you see it in galaxy mode that in some galaxy modes they literally tell you all right man you're near death you got raised you start off with raising soul 
and you got a minute to beat this character and it's on hard difficulty good luck and you realize what the fuck did i just get myself into but yeah um also there is a raising soul combo which is absolutely nutty i did it with adele it's kind of cool but uh yeah that's pretty much just gonna be it for me rambling on the galaxy mode and uh and and battle zone i'm gonna start yapping on the uh on the cell games in the world tournament in a minute and i'm gonna yap on that when i come back from my editing break all right so uh like i mentioned before i went on my editing break uh raging blast 2 has a cell games and a world tournament mode where essentially you fight in the cell games or the world tournament whichever one you choose and you can choose between four to 16 different uh, competitors. And for the world tournament, they added a little special feature. So uh, let's just say I beat the world tournament with Trunks. And then I decide to go back through it again with another character. Um, at the end of it, I'll end up facing that same Trunks that I used to beat it the first time. Which is kind of cool. I don't know if it's like that for the Cell games or not. Um, but yeah, I played through both of them. They're pretty chill modes, you know, it's, it's, you know, it is what it is, you know, but it's cool. This game also has a ridiculous roster on release. Yeah, I'm talking about you, Xenoverse 2. This game has 99 characters, and uh, that is including the enhanced characters, which, you know, that, that gets counted into. But even without that, I think it's, I still think it's like 60-something, which is pretty good, and... And when you take into account that, you know, earlier when I bought up the Raging Soul and the Raging Soul combos, uh, each combo varies uh, depending on what type of character you have. For clarification, there's like seven different Raging Soul combos based on who you pick. So, yeah, uh, if you get the Raging Soul for one character, it's probably going to be different for another one. So, yeah, it's a lot of learning in this game. Now, on to the gameplay. Um, Rage of Blast 2 combat is very fast and high octane, and it's so fucking fast, in fact, that it could probably get a jet to take off. This game also has destructible environments res reminiscent of scenes from Dragon Ball and the manga. Uh, you can play one-on-ones, team battles, or you can do, like, power battles, which limits how much stuff you can put on the characters to make them stronger. Uh, you know, they got their, their basic attacks uh move string super attacks ultimate attacks all that regular stuff and this game and raging blast one are the only two games in the dragon ball series to have super saiyan 3 vegeta and super saiyan 3 broly and um honestly if super saiyan 3 broly was canon uh he he's wiping this he he's he, i'm sorry he's wiping the entire roster of this game and i cannot go without mentioning the fact that um this game was so balls to the wall i don't even know what the hell they had going on making this game but they said fuck it and added in a whole goddamn movie called plan to eradicate the super saiyans which is a remake of the original 1993 ova plan to eradicate the saiyans but this edition offers fans a unique uh dragon ball content that complements the gameplay experience and um overall i just gotta say dragon ball raging blast 2 is it is just that game um when it first launched uh it, it still has like mixed reviews uh with one i, I think i don't i want to say it was ign hold on let me let me clarify real quick i don't want to lie on nobody out here okay yeah i'm not lying on nobody i'm gonna say it right now uh you know your boys at ign you already know they had to give this game an astounding 5.5 out of 10 which is which what they call mediocre, mediocre, mediocre. <laughs> which is crazy, and their excuse was it has overcomplicated controls. But hold on, let me let me let me go ahead and let me go ahead and do some research real quick to see what they rated this game. But they fucking rated Budokai Zengai HD3 a eight out of ten when. Fucking Raging Blast 2 has less complicated combos or less complicated controls than BT3. I don't know what to say about that. Um, yeah, this game is this game has like a bunch of mixed reviews. It's 
it usually sits at a five or a six wherever you you look at somebody who reviewed it but um i just want to say no this game is a solid seven solid you know eight solid seven. no it, actually it's just a solid seven you know because this game has a lot of heart into it you know they they it is by far not worse than fucking ultimate tenkaichi i can tell you that much ultimate tenkaichi just fucking sucks i'm sorry if you like ultimate tenkaichi man hats off to you and i'm fucking sick that ign actually rated ultimate tenkaichi higher than raging blast 2 when i i i don't know how people like ultimate tenkaichi that fucking rock paper scissors game style shit like bro why couldn't you just give it the gameplay of like tenkaichi 3 or fucking raging blast like that combat style was so fucking stupid i hated that turn-based piece of shit but um yeah um I'm, this is pretty much i'm gonna like talk about some other stuff that i found out like midway through the video um apparently i found out that this game had pre-order content where it was just like different costumes for characters and i want to say it was different presets as well but i don't know for sure it might have been raising blast one where it was a preset called go to hell goku where if he hits you with an ultimate, you just fucking died. No matter how much uh, HP you had, you just died. Um, but yeah, it, it's kind of equivalent to the the red Pataras from um, BT3. But yeah, uh, this game has a lot to offer. It has a lot of, you know, lost content. Because, you know, those pre-order bonuses and stuff like that. And yeah, man. Honestly... Give this game a story mode like Raging Blast, and it's amazing. I mean, that is probably the only problem with this game. And, yeah, this is pretty much going to be it for the video today, guys. Um, It's been your boy, Kid Stain, and later.